Welcome to the Garage Apartment Sports and Entertainment with your favorite partners, favorite partners. I am the funky militant, Adari Jones. And as always, I got the tribe with me. So let the people know who you are. That boy, Mom Mizzle, up in this piece. D Mac back and better than ever. I'm out here on a beautiful, beautiful Saturday morning. Yes, indeed. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Subscribe. Click subscribe to our YouTube channel. And check out our website, thegarageapt.com. We got some good stuff on there. We got interviews. We got clips. We got we got uh, 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 articles. We got some great stuff on there. We even got some merchandise, man. So y'all be sure to check that out. Man, we've been, it's been, we've been on a bit of a hiatus, but we are back. And there's been quite a few things that have happened since our last show. So let's talk about it. You know, of course, with the global pandemic and the civil unrest and even dodging hurricanes, man, and quite a few things have 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 happened and occurred since our last show. But the biggest one right now, the biggest news is the NBA and its protest of social injustice and the killings of black men and women. Now, D, I'm gonna throw it to you because I know that you were uh, quite proud and pleased with the players' efforts. So what, what, what is your take? How do you feel about the NBA and the protests? Uh, well, thank you very much, sir. I was pleased with it. I was very happy with it. Um, the way I see it, um, they were trying, first off, just a little history. There were several players that did not want to play. They did not want to come back because they felt like it would take attention away from the ongoing protests, Black Lives Matter, police brutality, all those things like that. So that was before the bubble was even started. They encouraged everyone, not everyone, but some people opted out. Most people played, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they did their tributes. Um, they were good. They lasted we got a lot of news coverage for a little bit, and now those are falling on deaf ears. The momentum for the protests in a lot of places is dying down. Um, and so they were already they were already wanting things, wanting to do something to bring back the attention. That was one of the reasons they came back with the Black Lives Matter on the court with the T-shirts and everything like that. So once they realized that the attention was not being garnered like they wanted, they really only had one other option if they were still going to do something. And that is literally to strike your, to take your body, which is your soul, their sole form of entertainment that they are providing and to not allow that to be entertainment for these people. Um, that is their only recourse. Um, and so they chose to use that. And what I like about it is that it was a unanimous thing, not unanimous necessarily. Everybody agreed that they should do it, but everybody came together and everybody did it. That is the only way that they can put additional pressure on the people who can make the change. Um, my issue is that they, one, shouldn't make the change because they didn't make the problem, but two, they are not in the position to make the change. All they can do is bring awareness to the situation. So basically all protests do are bring awareness to a situation that people don't like. This was basically them, their protests bringing awareness to a situation that they don't think is right. They now have the ears, hopefully, of the people, their owners, their governors, who can do something about it. And it's now up to them to put their money where their mouth is, basically, and do something about it. So now, Ahmad, I know you were saying that you don't necessarily know how effective that truly was. It might have been a bit of uh, cutting your nose off to spite your face. What 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 do you mean by that? What I mean, we talked about this off camera. We've talked about it actually pretty extensively since it's happened. What are your feelings? What what how do you feel? How impactful do you think the protests have been? I don't think it's been a particularly that one because it wasn't a protest. It was a postponement. It was a, a, a team decided we're not gonna play right before they were scheduled to play which 
if they had a plan, like clearly they didn't have a plan. They had to get the union head to come on there and tell them, look, if you don't play, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Now, before they went into the bubble, if they're a united front, they should have already made that decision. Okay, if we decide not to have some sort of organization, if we decide not to play, we decide not to play, and we're willing to deal with these consequences. Clearly, they weren't. Clearly, everybody had not been polled. It was just a group that decided, okay, we'll grandstand and not play today. Then when they start talking those figures, and I don't know, I guess they made some sort of empty promises about what kind of initiatives they were going to do that's going to somehow stop black uh, racist police officers from shooting black men, which I don't see how you solve that problem with that. Um, I just think it's one of those things where, okay, I guess it made some people excited and happy that finally they're standing up. But standing up for what, actually? And then what was gained? Nothing. And everybody's getting on LeBron because the, the, the younger players are saying somehow he, he talked down to us. But he made a good point. Now, I'm not a LeBron fan at all, but y'all don't even have a plan of action. The thing is, is that, yes, they play for individual teams, but you're all members of the NBA PA. That's what you are. That's your first loyalty. Your loyalty should be to that before you're loyal to the Milwaukee Bucks, to the New Jersey Nets, or any of that type, or the Brooklyn Nets. None of that matters. What matters is the NBA PA. You should be a united front. You're a union. Y'all should have made that decision before you went into the bubble of what you were going to do in this circumstance. Now you just look crazy. All you did was make me have to watch them. Uh, 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 what, 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 what was even on that now? I don't know. The RNC. That is all uh, you no, had no, was no, the no, RNC. No. Yeah, that was never. Uh, I don't watch any kind of political. Uh, I disagree with you, Ahmad. What do you disagree about? I disagree. One, to think that the, the, uh, the alternative, there is no other alternative. I guess the alternative, in your opinion, would be to strike for the remainder of the restart season. And as you said so callously, that also would not solve all of black people's problems. So what would be the point of that? Number two, they have a livelihood. They have jobs just like everyone else. Number three, as you stated before, their main goal is the Players Coalition or the PA or whatever. That PA has a representative that is paid, that is educated in order to go through these things, in order to foresee these type of things. It's not LeBron James and Kawhi Leonard's. Uh, oblig or Pat Beverly, for that matter, obligation to foresee that we might get another black person shot and everybody might feel bad and everybody might want to strike. That's not their job to foresee. And the other part, how they just decided not to play a game, that is how it happens. You have a game scheduled. This next thing occurs, and so now your mindset has changed. And so now you talk about it, you have your meetings, you get the information from the representatives, and you decide whether you want to play or not. Was it better that the Astros and the other baseball teams all came out, did the national anthem, did or not the national anthem, did the moment of silence, lined up, put the jerseys down, and then walked off? Would that be better? And one game – to say it did nothing means nothing or is wrong to me when that is literally all that was talked about for those two days. That is all that was talked about for those two days was the fact that they sat down for those two games. That was it. And to say that that did nothing, I disagree with because the conversation is the point. Number one. Number two, the plan. The plan is massive. The plan is big. The plan, as you say, is not going to occur with one action. It's not going to occur in one decade, for that matter. So to say that they don't have a plan, so thus you do nothing, I completely disagree with that. You do what you can do, and then you need to have a plan for what you can do. But you, for you not to have a larger plan to solve racism in America, I can't fault you for that because the people who should have the plan for solving racism in America don't have that plan. Which is another good point, okay, is that are these even the right people to be making this stand? Because I see a lot of people on social media, a lot of people on social media, a few people in particular, uh, who came out and said, I wish the NFL players were like the NBA players. 
but this dude ain't boycotting teaching. He ain't boycotting singing in clubs because that's what he does. He ain't boycotting none of that stuff. Okay, so why are why are these athletes somehow the uh, why are they steamrolling this movement? Why is it even on them to do that? Why do we expect this out of our athletes and celebrities? You don't see Michelle Wee and Jeremy Lin and uh, you, Darvish. The Asians don't look to them to solve their issues. Because we see, because as Americans mm -hmm. and as consumers, they see these athletes mm -hmm. accomplish everything they can't do. They see people jumping over other people. They see them hitting baseballs miles and miles away. So they they can do that. They can do this. They can they can fix okay. they can fix the the my they can fix my psyche of how I think about other people. Okay. So we go down to the root cause of this stuff anyway, which is my point in a way is you got, okay, so you have this group of guys in negotiations with the owners about certain initiatives when it's a, I, I'm of the opinion that these guys don't even know enough to know what the damn issues are and the root causes of the issue. They're talking about police shooting people, but they don't understand why we're powerless. I've but heard no one a... talk about reparations. I've heard no one talk about the wealth gap. I've heard no one talk about redlining any of the kind of stuff that's the reason why we're here. The reason why we're here is because we don't have any money. We're a broke group of people. We have no economic power. And the only people with economic power in this country and influence that are of our hue are guys who went to college one or two years. Well, so I mean, that's how is it their responsibility? How do you even expect them? <laughs> it goes, that's it goes the problem. So you, should not, you should not expect them to do but it, they but they're are. the ones in the room. They're the ones, and they're not inviting Sean King into the room. They're not inviting no, no, whoever no, no. into the room. I didn't like, say put him in the room. These are. I'm the just White saying. I'm just saying, and just whoever, Tamia Mallory, whatever, Tamika Mallory, whatever her name. They're not inviting them into the room. All I'm, I'm saying is that those are the people that see. That's another problem that we're having that we'll talk about later on. But I'm just saying yeah. those are the people that are in the room. So thus, those are the people that are talking to the people, the the owners in this situation, who are the ones that can make the difference. So and that's the yes, problem. It's on them. And what we would like is for them to either a bring someone in who is a little more educated on the fact, or for them to educate themselves on the fact. But they're not all idiots. Don't think because they dribble idiots. the ball, they're all idiots. I'm not saying they're idiots. But I, what I'm saying is that they're over their head on this. They don't even know who to hire to be their damn accountant. That's how they wind up broke. How, how, how do they know who to bring in for these issues? Another big problem, another thing I had a problem with these past couple of months, okay, and I think this is emblematic of why we're in the position we are and how so much of this stuff is just symbolic symbolism that's going to amount to going nowhere. Remember, okay, what black media personality got the first interview with Joe Biden after he uh, 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 picked Kamala? Char Charlemagne? Nope, not even him. You saw it. Cool. Cardi B. Uh, uh, yeah. Joe uh, Biden uh, sat uh, down uh, and uh, talked to Cardi B. That's yeah, who she she yeah. Now, first off, I don't even think she's black, but you know I have a problem with that anyway. Yeah, I don't see nothing. She's Dominican, whatever. She looked like the Honduran girl that worked at the store, whatever. Okay, I don't think she's black. Secondly, she don't even know what questions to ask. So why is she at the forefront asking the black questions? It wasn't Roland Martin. It wasn't any. It wasn't even Don Lemon. It was Cardi B. He went on there placating her. I'm Joey B. So nobody's ever serious with us. <laughs> nobody's serious with us. It's always a damn game. Nobody's serious with us. Well, I mean, you, I mean, people. there's actually a lot to what you just said there because um, one reason being here, of course, here in America, we, we do for some reason, we, we 
we value celebrity like no other country does and 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 oftentimes be like you said because we are in such economic strife as black people the only people who seem to obtain a significant amount of wealth that can go that can actually change generation generational wealth as we call it are our entertainers are our athletes are our musicians are our actors and actresses our models so because those are the only individuals with generational wealth of course those are the also the only individuals that people who also have wealth value or are around like you said we can't get into those rooms with them because simply we just don't have the capital to be in those rooms so then the responsibility responsibility is forced upon them now my my issue with the protest it wasn't even it wasn't even so much that and yes there is something to the fact that we're asking very young athletes, many of them who did not finish school, many of them who weren't in school very long, and that does not make them idiots by any means. But like you said, it's a complex dish. It's a complex issue. And oftentimes where we all make the mistake is we only move through emotion. Mm -hmm. So they got emotional. They went and protested with no, well, well, it was because it was initially supposed to be a boycott. They were going to boycott with no plan. And they don't have enough leverage to boycott. Because they need that money. Yes, they have to finish the season. If they don't finish the season, their collective bargaining agreement is is then terminated. If the collective bargaining agreement is then terminated, they then are going to be forced into some other things that they don't want. So what plan are you speaking of if you know that they cannot continue to strike longer than the weekend? If you know that there are other parameters on them, what is this plan that everyone seems to think that this group of people should have? What is the plan? It's not even so much it. what is the plan. Is the question is, why is there no plan? Because they did not have a plan. They had, they had a list of grievances that they addressed and that they had, I guess, accepted or placated by the owners thus far, leading with the voting thing, uh, the arenas all used for voting, leading with uh, more money put out there for uh, social issues and things like that on top of the 500 million, which is nothing, that the owners have already pledged in the first place. Now, the plan is not a good enough plan. I fully agree with that. But here's my one thing is that you don't to be disobedient civil disobedience you don't have to have the plan a plan is needed to have a plan of uh to have an outcome that is successful that you are ultimately trying to reach but in order to do the protest or the boycott or the strike or whatever it is that you're going to do all you have to have is what you want you don't have to have how you're going to get there. The, the, the people striking at, at, at General Motors, they don't know how they're going to get to that $45 an hour. They know they want that $45 an oh, hour, yes and they're going to strike until no, then. No, no, no. That's not true. Yes, they do. No, no. The they workers don't know. They the union knows. Workers. Yes, the union they knows. Have a the union workers. In the union. And the reps that work that are elected in the. the and the reps that are elected in the union mm-hmm. that are paid to do that, they who know how to do it, who are professionals, the same way there's a players union who is paid to do that and who's paid to have access to the NBA's books, to know how much money they can spend on this. They are paid to do that. Those are the ones that need to have the plan. Be mad at that heifer for not having the plan. Don't be mad at the players for not having the plan when they are on the bottom rung as an employee of the company. Okay. okay but I don't okay. Hold on, I don't hold believe. On. Hold on, Mark, real quick. Yeah. I don't believe they sought her out at all. That's what I'm saying. They got so emotional. It wasn't until game time that they decided they weren't going to take the floor. They, and they had nothing well, in place. They, they spoke had, with her. They spoke with Obama. They spoke with Chris Paul on a regular basis. They spoke with a, a, a black CEO. I forgot his name. They spoke with people during this. The Milwaukee Bucks people, George Hill, spoke, reached out to Obama. They spoke with these people. LeBron, Chris Paul, they spoke with people. Like, Can I interject? Yes. Yeah. Let them all speak, then let me go, please. Yes, it was emotional. 
because they were put in a all right, I'm I'm gonna simplify it to the simplest form. They were put in jail. They were pretty much put in jail. They played every other day. There was no break. They mm -hmm. they're sent away from their families. They're put every they they were they gave a statement before they left. This is what we're going to jail for. This is what we're gonna to try to accomplish for our for the people. And the owner's like, okay, we'll we'll let you try, but you gotta play every other day. So yes, it was emotional because it's taxing on them. They practiced, they did the little the dog and pony show with the practice, it was light, blah blah blah. Some of them came in late. The stars came in late because they got their last, they last minute goodbyes and tried to set everything up. But once it, once the grind started, they had no time to do anything. It's either play and rest, play and rest. There wasn't, there wasn't a day where you didn't see a basketball game going on. So they were very emotionally tired. So a, that was pretty much their break they needed they had a breaking point and with the most recent event happening it wasn't just jacob uh blake getting shot yeah that 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 hurt but it was also the response of before they left they were in the streets it could be, it could have been manufactured, whatever, whatever, but they were in the streets. They thought they were really, they had their hand on the pulse or their fingers on the pulse of the streets of the people. And so them seeing that now they're taken away from it, it's happened again. And then the response of they are, yeah, people are protesting like last time. But now you're letting somebody come from out of state and shoot them up. I don't think you would necessarily, I sure know you wouldn't really necessarily have that in LeBron out there protesting, which he wouldn't be. But even if Jalen Brown was out there protesting, you ain't going to let this, let somebody from the outside just come shoot up a place. And so they're very emotional about that because their cause is not, and even even with a plan, I mean, what, honestly, here's my, here's my honest question. And this is for everybody who looks at this. Hey, what do you think they are? What do you think these people are? What plan are you talking about? Plan for what? All they can do is plan to, to, uh, acknowledge the problem they can't come up with a solution they like us honestly all they do is make money and they can vote they're not political they could be they can be they can contribute like we can some exactly. people, they can contribute more mm -hmm. like we can like unlike we can but none of them run for office None of them can take a stand because of the stand that uh, that the, their business owners take because they don't want to lose that money. So what is what is the real plan? Everybody's like they have to have a plan. No, they don't have to have a plan. They really don't have to have a plan. They can make you sit down and think of a plan. Because you have to you have to face the facts now. Ain't no basketball going on. Ain't no football going on. But there's this uh there's this TV that's showing this TV or there's this cell phone here showing people getting shot by the people there that's supposed to protect us. There has to be a plan and there has a to, to be a what? plan because, a plan for what? because no, otherwise no, because otherwise for what? 
what I'm getting ready to tell you. You have to have a plan for change to occur. Otherwise, all you're doing is talking. Muhammad Ali just talked. Because, but this is my point. The whole reason that they claiming that they're doing, well, let me not say claim. The whole re, their whole motivation for doing this is to bring change. You are not going to bring change with not with just simply bringing attention to something. There has to be an actionable gain made. And in order for you to get that, you have to put you have to put movements in place. You have to put uh, uh, there has to be a cause and an effect, meaning you have to do something which then causes this to happen, which then causes this to happen, which then causes this to happen, which then causes this to happen. And protesting is not doing that. I mean, but they do that already, though. Protesting is not doing that. But they already so, do that. So let me let me just. They so. already have charities. They already have foundations. They already have things set up. So what? Schools. What plan is so that? My, let me just. So there needs to be a plan in general in order to make the change happen. That is correct. But if nobody sees it as an issue that plan will never come out because no one will want to hear it okay so protesting is a is a cry for those that are not being heard they have to protest first or protesting has to occur and once that attention is drawn to it then the change or the plan can be enacted but as you were saying there was not the same outcry from Blake that there was from Floyd, okay? It had been, and it, it generally probably couldn't be just from how high it was. So it has been diminished. The momentum has gone down. Their recourse, the one thing they control is their bodies. The one thing that money makers want from them is their bodies. Let's take that away to draw attention to the problem. Once that attention is drawn to the problem, then the plan can be enacted. For you to say that there is no plan, that nobody has a plan, I vehemently disagree with that. The problem is that there are too many plans out there in order to accomplish the single goal that we want because nobody can become unified. That is our ultimate problem as a people is that nobody can unify behind one thing. We have no one leader, one person that is going to unify us as a people or at least as a majority of a people as there was in the 60s. Right now, we can't even do anything without one group to the left sniping in with their opinion, saying it's bad. One group to the left sniping in with their opinion, saying it's not enough. Another group in the front saying this and another group in the back saying this. That's our ultimate problem. But we'll talk about that with the next topic later on. But I, but I also, I also, like, most of us, are, if we're not educators, we're parents. How, what, what is our plan when we discipline children? Our plan is to show them the error of their race so that they do not do the same thing again. What is the initial, what is our initial, what is the initial action though? You hit or them our initial reaction. reaction. What, to be I don't clear? know. You tell me. To get, I don't, I mean, so won't you just answer? You got it open. Won't you answer it for us, brother? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> what's the? Well, back in the day, it would be a spanking, right? Now we we can't really do that. Now it. I mean, I mean, what you do behind your doors? Hey, hey I hey. ain't saying nothing, brother. Hey. You talking over there? I'm over here on the phone, man. We can't. <laughs> but. In these modern times, they say you're supposed to to discipline somebody. You take away what they what they really want. Correct. Mm -hmm. They say the most effective way to discipline a child is to take away what they really want. Time out. A time out. All right. 
So that's what they, that's what they, they, the, the athletes gave people a timeout. I know they had them up. Second, second. What plan did Muhammad Ali have? What plan did Kareem Abdul Jabbar have? What plan did Brown have? Muhammad Ali was, Muhammad Ali didn't boycott anything. They boycotted him. But they all came, they all, they, they all came to this, this great convention everybody talks about, but nobody talks about what came out of this great convention. No, Muhammad Ali was a part of a group that supported him when he did not get any money. Exactly. And that's why these guys could not stay off. The black community cannot support itself. That's our major problem. That's why we have, and we're going to get to this guy later, we have Jason Whitlocks and things like that because there is, if we could afford to make it a bad thing to speak out against black people, we could actually blacklist. But, but what, does it, what does it profit you to stay black? Nothing. You die broke. Our main problem is economics. None of these guys speak about actual economics because they don't understand it. They know that they have gotten a whole lot of money recently. Okay. Also, just, just just one more thing. We were going in before that, and I'm talking before I got cut off by the government. <laughs> it's um, it's playing chess versus playing checkers. Okay. You you see what that says, right? White supremacists and militias have infiltrated police across the U.S. Report says, right? Absolutely. You see that, and we've had a whole bunch of those, right? Nobody talks about real strategies. Now, however many years ago, these white supremacists figured out, you know how we can gain the power that we want? We can infiltrate police departments. So we're going to send... But we're going to send... You're going to grow your hair out, you skinheads. You're going to make sure you don't have a criminal record. And we're going to get in these positions of power. Our people don't even want to vote. They think that's too much. Even and and they can't even see how important that is. And I and I talk to black people who tell me that kind of craziness all the time. I'm like, well, why do you think all these people constantly running trying to get your vote, huh? If your vote's not important, why do you think they gave you Kamala? Because the Democratic Party wants to use you as a workhorse for votes. Everybody's out there trying to get your vote. Okay. We won't even do the simplest thing. Right. Rather also, than even better having an actual plan to accomplish the goals when you're coming. These white supremacists that infiltrated the police department, they're poor white trash, as it were. Poor people. Exactly. Like us. But they figured out ways to get in and use political power to gain power. We don't do that. We want LeBron James to speak for us and to sit down and to kneel and all this type of stuff so we can have something symbolic instead of something real. Again, we don't even vote, and we don't even see that these people are constantly running at us trying to get our vote. Right. And that groups that are actually smaller than ours outvote us. Uh, 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 um, what's it? Mike Pence? Should, a person like Mike Pence should never never win an office in this country because that person is in such the minority of opinions in this country. But you know what? The people behind him show up and vote. Exactly. You talk to mainstream Americans, they do not think like Mike Pence. But somehow this guy's the vice president of the United States. Donald Trump even. But you know what? The people that support him, they get out and they vote. We won't even do the simplest thing. So it's playing chess versus playing checkers. We're playing checkers. We're not going to play basketball for two days. What's that going to do? It brings attention. Everybody, we already have everybody's attention. We had their attention after George Floyd. But and it's been squandered. It's, but yes, you, you're you're totally correct because as we stated in a few other, or in our interview with Officer Thurgood, uh, one of our questions was, why don't 
why don't like why can't we get people to police our own communities our own people police our own communities well that's part of, like like you say that's part of the infiltration that's part of the infiltration having just regular people that live in these communities go ahead take six weeks and what that's all the training it takes six weeks yeah. no Get your police training I don't buy guess what? Guess what? How many security guards you see walking down the street? Yeah, bunch of them. Coming on the bus. How many people take security guard jobs? We're when all you just, security. When you could just do pretty much the same training and be actually police. And ha actually have benefits, a 401k. You could have protection. And I'm not not just police. We in, in the infiltration, what? like you said, we don't have enough. You get of thirty thousand dollars. Hold on, if you, cops get in in Houston can get thirty thousand dollars towards a down payment on a house. Mm -hmm. Like teachers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Even teaching, people don't. Teaching is a is a when we had the uh, the 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 interview with with uh, Mr. Mackey and Mr. Holmes. Not enough people. It's a community. Everything's a community thing. But if all the communities come, not when I say come together, you don't all come into one spot. But if you all, when you, in the idea of coming together, if you all do the same thing, that's coming together. You now have a like mindedness, a like movement, at, uh, what they call mobilization. That's mobilization. It may not be the physical mobilization that you think the definition that you think it is like everybody mobilized and we march no it's a different the economic and a almost psychological mobilization because you're teaching better you're making better yeah it may not be as grandioso as as you would think but it's it's a growing process in making people actually better as a people and the, yes that's the infiltration that we that we need because like we say they yeah there are people that run for office but i don't think they're the right people that run for office because mm -hmm. the right people aren't getting put in place because the right people are probably just sitting out there doing nothing so i mean we, we can all we all we all come to the consensus that 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 of course what what we all wanting and desire is is of course generational none of this stuff will be fixed in a matter of of days weeks months or or even years like it's truly going to be generational because the systematic oppression that has been put in place has been generational generation so we, we i think we all understand that it's but what, what, I told you, to my, get into the trouble it's hard to get out it's lifespans. It's, it's beyond generations. It it's lifespans. I said it's, it's easy to get in trouble, but it's hard to get out. And everybody knows that. The only problem is I don't think our people truly understand that. And for the DRC, that, when, when, when we were in the group text the other day, that's why this is one of the reasons that I don't, that I disagree with the talented 10 thing is because I don't really think that our, even our black elite understand the issues of the rank and file in our community. They're too far removed from it. That's just the way I see it. So I don't think that it should just be the black elite that go in and make decisions. And our elite is only elite in money only and not the elite in intellectual anyway. We don't pay intellectuals in our community. Absolutely. Not moving so on. We, 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 we have to leave. Absolutely. So <laughs> along with again the, 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 the protest and the, 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 the social unrest, man, we have actually had, of course, we all know that we are all living in a global pandemic that has brought the world to a halt. And we've had several people try to wheel it back into movement. 
Uh, we have several leagues that have, are uh, continuing with their season. We've had, of course, the NBA does their bubble. We had uh, the Women's Professional Soccer League, the N, what is it, the NWSA? They did a they did a World Cup style tournament in a bubble in Utah. We had the MLS do a World Cup style tournament in uh, uh, in their bubble in Orlando on the same sports complex as the NBA. And of course, the WNBA doing their bubble. They're playing their entire season in their bubble um, at IMG Academy. But along with that, we have seen. We have seen, uh, oh, of course, and then you have Major League Baseball, who is not in a bubble, and they seem to be struggling, having the most struggling. Uh, yeah, Major League uh, Baseball uh, in practice now. and difficulties dealing with COVID, man. So, um, what do we say about these leagues, man? I think it's it's what was what is amazing to me is how motivated they truly are about the money. And we again, we all know the importance of the money. We stress the importance of the money. Everybody needs it. Everybody wants it. But it seems like they are. It is such a in the forefront for them that they are even putting logic and health and safety to the wind. What 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 do you how do you gentlemen feel about the the, the professional leagues and their and their handling of the COVID? Uh, so, pandemic? so where well, I see it's it's the I'm sorry, D, but it's the same it's the same problem as I'm sorry, but I'm keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's the same it's the same uh, problem as as a social justice thing is what you just said everybody puts everything away for a piece of paper or some digital numbers that that's what rules the world that what makes the world turns around and then you're expecting athletes to solve this problem and when you have owners they have a brain they have a heart they have compassion. Do they? I mean, they do. They they have it. They may not have it for their their employees, but they got it for something. That's not how you I mean, they get become rich. I was gonna say they become rich off that for no reason. No, right, see now, but hey, you, you they, gotta we can't, we, If that if that's what we gonna say, that's how they get rich. We can't complain because that's 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 the business model. Oh, that's my point. So. And, and when it comes to it's it's hey, about hey, that's why I keep going and I can I can segue straight into your point. <laughs> it's about it's about perspective. So as a professional league, my one goal is to make money. That is my one goal is to make money. So to think that they would try to get back and make money, that's not surprising to me. Um, now you have to have the players or employees or the players to make your money so you have to have a similar uh, some sort of safety precautions in place for your players one would think um which is why the nba the NF nhl um in wnba they had it they did it the correct way um due to the bubble um nfl just literally the amount of people all together with what 10 NBA teams is like 90 something people just the players that's one NFL team alone so like the size of that bubble would be ridiculous and the amount of people that would have to adhere to that bubble would be absurd so not you it's going to be difficult to do the bubble in those situations so um they're going to have to figure out some other way to do it and honestly the NFL I assume that they're just not going to report it I mean, the NFL has shown no compassion towards their players in any shape, form, or fashion um, yet. So why would I assume anything different? Why would this be any different from uh, concussion protocol in the Super Bowl where all of a sudden we're just going to say, hey, you're okay and you're okay. We're not even going to take you into the tent. So I think there's going to be plenty of them with COVID. They're going to have to just sit out two weeks, and they're just going to say they're out, hurt, injured, whatever they want to call it, you know, and they're just going to keep 
moving them on and moving them on until the season's over because they have to make their money. It's not a good situation because, like he was saying, it's not showing the compassion for the players. Um, but it is the situation that I would expect to occur in the America we live in with the professional leagues. But see, but the thing is for me, okay, right now, full disclosure, I'm watching the Community Shield. Okay, that's in case anybody watches. Well, explain that for us. Right? Not, not, not a lot of people know what the Community Shield is. Soccer competition in England. Right. right. It's a soccer competition in England. It's a preseason game which fits the champion of the FA Cup against the champion of the league. Okay? The, the winner of the English Premier League versus the winner of the English FA Cup Football Association Cup, an open tournament for all teams in England. Anyway, now, remember, I remember us sitting at, at, at the studio when the funk was really kind of hitting the fan when it got out of China. And we were sitting there discussing Italy and how this stuff was headed over here and how bad the situation was in Italy. Per capita, Italy had a much worse case of COVID than did we. About a month and a half later, you were watching Juventus play AC Milan. You were watching sports go on over there. There's ways to do it and do it safely, but the thing is, the people in our country aren't willing to do the things to mitigate the circumstances. It's not just the pro leagues, it's the people in general. We were watching high school football last night, two packed games. And these are our high school students that we could care less about because everybody thinks, well, this is a hoax or it ain't as bad as you think it is. No, I think so it's it was, the overall attitude of the people. I think it was pretty and packed for the Splendor. It's just emblematic of the people in this country. Huh? I think it was pretty packed for the one door Chapel Hill game last night too. So what? Really, they played Texas yeah. last night. Chapel Hill won sixty-five thirty-five. Really? That's like what three A ball, two A ball. Yeah. And places like that, I guess, is not so bad because they probably don't have a whole lot of cases. I don't know, in, 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 in those small towns. But when you start playing in Houston and Dallas and San Antonio, it's going to be problems. And nobody's really taking it seriously. If you really go around and look at the attitude of people, you would think that we'd already licked this thing, man. What do you think? Yeah, right. that is and the... I, I mean... Go ahead. I was gonna say that that that's the amazing part to me is everyone's attitude towards it is that this is under control and it's far from it. Like I was mentioning last night while we were watching the game, I said, "Man, I'm uncomfortable watching this, man. I I just I cannot believe that people would put students, children playing a game. I mean, because ultimately that's all it is. There's no that that high school football. Yeah, it generates some money, but what? I mean, what 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 are what are they actually generating? Hey, high, school money money. Does, high school football hey, does not generate money. Hey, at least high Say school football is extracurricular to the school's curriculum. If you were in the groups I'm in, you would see that they're having national youth football tournaments right now with teams traveling, playing each other. <laughs> <laughs> okay, youth football. From hot spot to hot spot. Okay, I'm talking about six and under traveling from D.C. to Tallahassee, Florida to play youth football. Right, and that, so and so that's what I'm saying. I'm 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 truly confused and 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 and, and I'm not understanding that because even with the NCAA and I we we all know the amount of money that football generates for the NCAA. But the division, like you actually have two major conferences refusing to play, three other conferences saying they're going to play regardless. You got people petitioning to want to play. And, and, and with all of this, their campuses are having outbreaks. So you're saying to me, it's not safe enough to attend school, but we can go play sports. Like that, that the, the, the priorities here are just I agree baffling. with you 
wholeheartedly. The Big Ten says that they're about to play it, though. They're going to revise it, and they're going to be coming back soon. Pac-10, their players are still tripping, so I don't think the Pac-10 is going to play at all. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. We ain't tripping. The Pac-10 players, are, if you're if you're the Pac-10, you tripping. <laughs> the Pac-10, you tripping because y'all saying y'all ain't going to play. So, but, but we, I, we, my we, thing. We, uh, we've repeated the uh, the mantra, uh-huh. though. Money makes this, this, this go round. Yeah, but if everybody else is playing and you all are not playing and the Pac-10 is not playing, that's not going to end well for those players. It's not going to end well for those players because their Pac-10 is missing out on a lot of money due to one group of people. It's not going to end well for those players. But that's not why I'm at. I'm at where Hadara was saying. That is the country, bro. My, I'm sitting here dealing with the same thing at my house. My wife is a teacher, and they have no students allowed on campus up until September or something. But yet the athletics department is still going. The athletes are coming up to the school in the mornings and are practicing and are lifting weights and are roaming the school and doing things, catching COVID and all. Like, so this is just a, it, it is a, this is not, it's like you say, it's the colleges not taking care of, it's the school districts, it's everybody is basically, but it, it, if you think about it, ultimately it makes sense because the United States of America was is built on money. It's built on capital, and you can't have capital if nobody's moving. Simple as that. So they are going to have to get people back so that you can make your money so that America will be America. When What I hate about it is that if that's the case, then that's the decision they should have made at first. Because what was that three months for where everyone was sitting on their butts, everyone was not doing anything, couldn't go anywhere, was doing blah, blah, blah. It was supposed to give them time to get everything prepared. And like what you McCullough was saying, we have had the worst response in the world. In the world, maybe third worst response because Brazil was pretty bad as well. And I'm hearing there's some places in Africa that's tripping. But I mean, but uh, uh, they, with our I pure mean, population, also high with eight, our so. population, uh, they cure polio though. I think uh, with our population, with our medical um, advances and the capabilities that we have here, there is no reason for COVID to be affecting us in the manner in which it is, except for pure, pure. Incompetence. Well, again, like I say, money rules. Like we said, cash money rules, rules everything that, around me. Uh, pretty much, cash rules everything around us. And dollar, dollar bills, uh, everything makes money. So everything. even even the little leagues, they make money off the registrations and the teams. They make. Millions. Everybody makes money. Everybody makes money, so it doesn't even matter. The the attitudes of okay, uh, it's next man up. You, we still having babies, so that next person on that next person gonna play. You know what I'm saying? And the RC that that three months, that three months, it's all psychological warfare too. That three months is for you to. Get bored, get upset, and ready to do anything. Just your have my rifle and storm the courthouse. Exactly. It, 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 it's for you to just get upset, get bored. But I'm tired of this. I'm, I'm about to make something happen. All right. Let me show you something that's so ridiculous. And because I've been getting called to referee games all summer. But let me show you something so ridiculous. Let me show you how much people want to play. Let me show you this product right here. Hold on. Hold on. I, I got to show you this product. Okay. So, y'all see my screen, right? Mm-hmm. You see that? Mm-hmm. You see that, that, that thing? It's your home screen. Huh? All we see is your home screen. Oh, Lord. Okay. That's you for that? your whistle. That's a Fox 40 <laughs> whistle, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because oh, I thought that was for something else, and I was like, "Dude, I know, right?" Going on? It makes you think of the gimp on uh, 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 Pulp Fiction, Pulp Fiction, right? <laughs> well, 
yeah, this is how bad they're trying to get us to do youth sports and all this type of stuff. This is what they want you to wear. Hmm? Now, I, explain to me how I can verbally report a foul with that damn thing on. But, but yeah, this is where we are, people. And they say it's going to be here for a while longer. So this vaccine comes around, but they're about to have a home test for it, they say. They say, uh, I heard on NPR, we've put over a billion dollars into testing for COVID-19, but the United States has put $250 million into vaccines. The government, that is, has put only $250 million into a vaccine which would stop the effect of the COVID, but put over a billion dollars into finding out who had it. Well, we all know it's easier to treat. I mean, it's cheaper to treat than, I mean, yeah. it's more profitable to treat than to cure. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that with all diseases in, in modern times now. Like, how much money have we given to, to cancer? And we ain't stopped cancer, even though there's so many, we ain't stopped cancer yet. Yeah. Shout out to well, see, I think it's more important to develop treatments, like effective treatments, than it is to have a vaccine. That's what we just said. Yeah, okay, good. Something to treat the dang old thing. So now talking about other things, I mean, of course, we know everything has been affected by the the uh, pandemic, and of course, the poster child for hypocrisy, the NCAA, is continuing to make sure that they remain that as so. Uh, just recently, as after what as far as yesterday, I believe they just came out with a new eligibility waiver ruling saying that they will not take away anybody's eligibility. However, of course, you know that they have a number of scholarships that schools, schools, especially in football, are allowed to have. So this year, they're going to allow them to keep the maximum. They're giving them uh, uh, more scholarships than they normally do. It used to be 115. Then they dropped it down to 85. Well, this year, they're going to have more. But after this year, they're going to go back to 85. So, and what in their ruling, what they said was, even if you have players who still have eligibility, and even if they have used up most of their eligibility, they're not going to take away their eligibility. However, those schools are not obligated to offer those students that year of that last year or two years of eligibility. So what no that problem. basically means is that, yes, you can have a, 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 a player who is still eligible, and I don't know, you might decide, ah, I got a better freshman coming in, or I no longer want this player here. And you would basically take his scholarship from him and tell him to go play somewhere else. I mean, but they do that already. I was going to say, is that not, but like nine times out of ten, that dude that's losing his scholarship now or that they're just not going to renew even yeah, though he has many, eligibility. He would have lost his spot anyway. And your scholarship is one year at a time, right? So technically he probably could have been released from the scholarship anyway. Well, we're, not about, we're not talking about spots on the team. We're not talking about positions. We're not talking about, oh, a freshman came in better than you. You're not starting anymore. We're talking about, hey, I got a new class of freshmen. I got 17 new freshmen that I want. I got 14 uh, 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 seniors or juniors who still have eligibility that ah, I might play, I may not play. So, hey, look, guys, uh, we're not going to offer you a scholarship this year. Y'all need to go find it somewhere else. But they changed that in the early 2000s. Even though your scholarship was one year renewable. The school is four years, right? Yeah, but see, but well, well you get six well, years. Well, you get five the, years to do four. No, you, get you get five years, years to do four. No, you get six years for that one year renewable scholarship. The thing is, is that there were certain stipulations that would cause that scholarship to not be renewed. I have a good freshman class was not one of them. Right. 
Okay, they changed that in the early 2000s because I remember when Art Bryles came to U of H and a lot of my homeboys who was on the football team was in Southwest Texas State that next year because he was like, <laughs> okay, hey, man, you ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. But the coach had to help you find a scholarship opportunity elsewhere. So, and also... But my, my question is... Are they getting kicked out of school? Can they stay in the university? So let's say I'm on there. I'm mediocre. I have a freshman that's coming that's top five in his position. You take my scholarship, even though I have the eligibility left. Or am I kicked out of U of H? No, you can take a loan out and go to school. <laughs> and see that, and that's and oh, that's not, my. Oh, okay. I'm kicked out of U of H. Then, basically, <laughs> basically. Is what you're exactly. How many students? How many students are going to be able to do that? And 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 who who do you believe is going to be affected by that mostly? What well, of course well, yeah, we but, know. But also, that only helps certain schools because just because you can give 85 scholarships does you not mean you can public. fund 85 of them. Okay, that's kind of one of the problems now, even with the numbers they got with like, what is it, 80 or 75 scholarships? I guarantee you the University of North Texas and UTEP does not have 80 scholarship football, 80 scholarships for football. They've probably got 70 that they can fund. You know what I'm saying? And they break those up and give a lot of people half scholarships so that they can have a 100 man football some, team. Somebody, some, some of them give uh you get just books. Yep. I know plenty of dudes, and they talking about paying student loans. I was like, hold on, didn't you get a scholarship? Well, if the if the ultimate outcome of that rule next year would mean that those guys can no longer attend the school in which they have been attending for several years now, then that is an asinine rule, and that needs to change. But I'm assuming they will probably get sued anyway. <laughs> But they won't win because it's not enough people that are one person in order to win that. We don't think that they have grounds for that. I mean, because it's just like you said, that because that's that's how I'm envisioning it. Now, of course, I don't know this to be true, but from you have I'm grounds. Reading, from what I'm reading and from what I'm understanding, that when they basically take your scholarship from you even though you have your eligibility, simply because they have freshmen coming in that they want. Like I said, not because of any other reason. It's because they got, you still have eligibility. Uh, um, I got a new freshman class coming in. Uh, uh, basically, I want you to go because I want yeah, to Nobody would freshmen. say that, right? Well, I mean, man, and the one thing I know you about these coaches, all, all my experiences with coaches in school, yeah, they was cutthroat. They was pretty cutthroat, man. They yeah. were pretty cutthroat. Yeah, because I don't want to just put that on our brows because when Tom Penders was hired at U of H, he did the same thing. <laughs> he cut everybody but three. <laughs> and that's so. why his butt is gone, too. <laughs> so that is, uh, yeah, that's not... That's not good. No, it's not. So, like I it's said, it's good for before, HBCUs, though. Huh? It's good for the HBCUs and other smaller schools because they're gonna have to go somewhere. There we go. So now, but see, the thing is, the problem. One of the problems too is the HBCUs seem to be the only ones taking this seriously, and they have made <laughs> plans to not play. I believe. So what they could have? I believe don't give out scholarships. Yeah, yeah I'm saying they shut down, down too. They was they said they were not playing at all. And you know, we but got they the don't have Half these cats didn't qualify to get in the Arizona State. How the hell are they gonna go to Yale? Exactly. <laughs> they wouldn't have gotten to Arizona State. If you could qualify to Arizona State out of middle school. There you go. <laughs> there you I had go. to throw in that alley oop. Yeah, I see, bro. You see, he did not hesitate. <laughs> To Vince Carter, and, and he, was, he just would not pass up the opportunity. He would not pass up the opportunity, man. Oh, did I say middle school? Sorry, they dropped the standards. <laughs> yes, indeed. So now, D, it is time Ooh. for your that's asinine. 
That's asinine. An arrest warrant for simple battery has been issued for Browns wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. That's asinine. Well, star NFL receiver Julian Edelman is in trouble with the law after a wild incident in Beverly Hills. That's asinine. Stunning charge, the billionaire owner of the New England Patriots, Robert Kraft, charged with the solicitation of a prostitute. That's asinine. A racism scandal is erupting during the NBA playoffs. That's asinine. And here's four reasons why. So, the, the that's asinine for this week is going to be a aforementioned Jason Whitlock. So, just a brief history on Jason Whitlock. He is a sports writer. Um, originally from Kansas City is where he began writing. I know he played college sports at Ball State. He used to have radio shows 15, 20 years ago. So he's a a black sports writer who has been around for a while, who was involved in the game, never had any professional looks, but was involved collegiately and obviously through high school um, and has really – has really be, has become a very known sports writer, a very good sports writer, actually, just with horrible opinions. But he, his ability to write is excellent. Um, and so he's always built him or has recently built himself on controversy. So he's always the one that will take the contrarian view normally against his people or normally against African-Americans, uh, the situation that's in at hand he usually goes against that so this particular case um it's a couple of things a lot of people are are discussing him he was talking he basically called not basically he called lebron james a bigot mm-hmm. in an article um and then um laid out his reasons for it um i'll touch on that briefly but my i have a lot uh, the main point that i wanted to get to was the fact that he he came on a radio station on Outkick the Coverage with Clay Travis, I believe his name is Clay Travis. Um, he Sound came like on his music star, very you? much so, and he's from here. Um, but he came on there and was and literally said that the Democrats and LeBron James and everything um, were pandering, like they always say, were pandering to the black community. Um, and that they were, and that the Democratic Party was basically out to bring down society, was basically their whole goal was to make everything bad, to make everyone lose money, to make everyone lose their jobs in order to have society outright evil, Um, or not evil, just have society bad. Um, I took that with high offense, uh, mainly because it just doesn't make any sense. I don't see what their benefit from everything going to shit, for lack of a better term, would be. Um, it's so then, stupid because they have the same economic policy. The same no economic policy. It's, policy. it's crazy. And then the the thing that they really got Trump me was... was a Democrat a few years ago. Exactly. You know, the thing that got me was he he felt the backlash coming, so he, he felt the need to inject the fact that this is not a partisan thing. He says he's not a Democrat. He says he's not a Republican because he does not vote at all. Okay? that He does not vote at all. That he doesn't even the, vote for mayor, right? He doesn't even vote for anything, he says. Not local, not anything. He does not vote. So that that's what really kind of irked me there because that's one of the pet peeves that I have is that yes you have issues you can complain all you would like to do that's fine also voting is a right which means you can choose to do it or you can choose not to I understand that it's your choice that is what makes America beautiful but if you do not vote and have no plans on voting I would appreciate it if you simply refrain from the deep, deep dives into politics, because I understand you have your opinion and you are able to have your opinion. It is an important opinion, as everyone's opinion is important. But when you say your opinion and then then come back and say, I do not vote, that basically tells me that all you are willing to do is express your opinion. And that's fine. You can express your opinion, as I stated before. But what I call expressing your opinion, others might call uh, 
a blowhard. Others might call talking out the side of their neck. Others might call just talking, no action. So um, that's what really irks me with him was the simple fact that he felt, and he's not an idiot. He's a very intellectual individual. Um, he's smart. He, he reads. He's, he's, he's continuing to educate himself. Um, but the simple fact that he would say that just let me know a little bit of insight into how let's just say I'm not going to say that that would be slanders I'm just going to say how how he truly thinks and how sometimes he doesn't think um, mm -hmm. and then how he has the blinders on to see only certain sides and see those as right and not others as far as I'm concerned he committed libel against LeBron James anyway you're talking about slandering him that is so that is that is also the thing to call LeBron James a bigot. So basically he called LeBron James a bigot. And in the article, he basically said that because LeBron James chose to speak out on the Jacob Blake shooting prior to all of the information coming out, he said that that was no better than Tucker Carlson doing the same thing with the 17 year old, white boy that shot the two people protesting for Jacob mm -hmm. Blake. So in going on that stance, I don't agree with that either um, because there are rights and there are wrongs. Yep. It doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter justification or what. It is wrong or it is right. If your life is not being threatened, it is wrong to take someone else's life. It's well, simple what about as if you shouldn't have even been there? If you shouldn't have been there. In any case, it's, it's, it's just simply wrong to take someone else's life at all times, really. But if, it is, if you don't feel your life is threatened, it is especially wrong. And it's heinous. It's not needed. There are other options if your life is not threatened. So for them to shoot that man seven times in the back when their life was not threatened, that's the end of the story. I don't need to hear anything else. You can tell me now that he was reaching for a knife, if that's what you say. I don't know how obvious the truth that is, but that's what you say. That's cool. But you found that out after you shot him seven times. You can tell me he had a gun in the car. You can tell me he was had a rap sheet for sexual assault. Whatever this slander or the information that these Fox News people are throwing out about this situation. None of that matters. None of that matters because at the time the man had seven shots put into his body. The police officer who shot him was not a threat, was not at a threat. He was not going to lose his life. He was not even going to get harmed. The dude wasn't even fighting him. So to call to get on LeBron James for basically speaking out and saying he should have waited to find out more information is also uh, uh, asinine statement and lets me know truly how idiotic Jason Whitlock is or what some people feel is how much Jason Whitlock wants to play this card that he is now playing or the role that he is now in which is the Black Will Kane. So that's where I'm at on that point as of now. Um and that's why he is the asinine person of the week, the month, and the last decade, if you really read on what uh, Jason Whitlock has said on articles and in movies and on radio. You know what, D? Uh, when you were talking about you were listening to uh, Jason Whitlock when you were in middle school, my earliest memories of Jason Whitlock was uh, in high school because he would sub in for Jim Rohn. And mm -hmm. I was listening to exactly. Jim Rohn every day. Exactly. So I remember li listening to him on Jim Rohn. And, I mean, that was 20-some-odd years ago. He was so bad, it'd be white dudes from Tennessee calling in. You got to be kidding, man. Upset. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> Upset, bro. You got bro. to be kidding, man. <laughs> okay. Like, he has turned completely. And, honestly, his turn coincided with his financial uprising, with oh, boy, his um, professional success, um, all of that came when he chose to become a heel in this wrestling match. Yep, he did. 
I mean, but, but he but he he was controversial then, kind of. Yes, that. no, he was he was on the fringe, but he would be controversial. He was basically controversial on all subjects. Uh -huh. Um, he did now not. Now he's anti-black. Now he's anti-black. Now he's anti-black, and he'll tell you he's not. He says that he only talks about black people and the Democrats because that's who he's dealing with and that's who black people deal with. But that's another one of my issues. If you say that you're not political, but you're only talking bad about one side, then that basically accomplishes the politics for the other. So don't say you're not political when you clearly are. And that goes for both sides, not just red or blue. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for that. That's asinine. Asinine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do we want to talk about old girl with the Phoenix Sun? Huh? She should have been that's asinine. Nah, that 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 mountainine. Talking <laughs> about the owner? No, the, 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 what's the girl name? Uh, Amar. Oh God, I don't remember her name. I know. You're talking about the owner, right? The one that. Powell. She's friends with Selena Powell, who's a world-renowned thought who, and what's scary is, you know, because Selena Powell's been, I mean, did, did you watch the interview? I mean, I know you watched that segment, but did you watch the interview and all the guys that they claim to have been with? I haven't um, watched any of them. Okay, well, I mean, it was some stuff about Trey songs that'll make you, I'm surprised he hadn't been me too yet, because for some reason he likes to basically get a girl in his room, take her phone, take her purse, take her keys, and release her whenever uh, he sees fit. He likes to pee on people, too, apparently, according to those. Say, that sounds like R. Kelly already. It yeah. sounds, yeah, he's a kidnapper. So <laughs> this whole thing's crazy because she even, uh, it's Devin Booker, right? She wound up saying his name. It was seven guys from the team, which... I mean, you talk about the bubble. And now, now, she did say it was two years ago on her birthday. And she didn't do it for the money. She did it for the D. And this is a WNBA player? She did it for the what? No, 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 no. This is a thought. Oh. This she didn't do it for the money. She did it for the what? For the, the D. D. <laughs> and because it was lit. You know, um, listen to that interview, right? Okay, because what I posted on there when I posted the interview on our on our garage department Facebook page was go hug your daughter. Yeah. Tell her she's smart. Tell her she's pretty. Tell her she can be anything. Even if it ain't true. Tell her. <laughs> okay. Because you don't want her doing that. Right. Doing a seven man mouth gangbang. Now she came in, she said that she was they just barged in the room because they saw her at the hotel. She was upstairs getting effed by another guy who works with the team when they barged in, and she they put them all on the bed. They barged in a hotel room. Huh? They barged in a hotel room. A hotel in a hotel room, room where she was in uh, making wow. love, if you don't have love to uh, uh, another member of the Phoenix Suns staff. Exactly. Now, what's, what's scary when you listen to these girls talk is that COVID ain't the only infection you got to worry about. <laughs> okay? Uh, circling around the in I, I'm surprised more guys didn't come out like magic because these guys really do. Because Selena Powell, her friend, she was one of the girls who outed Soldier Boy. Most recently, she had a spat with Snoop Dogg. Now, Snoop Dogg is 50. I don't know why he's out here banging 24-year-old thoughts. Because that's is. what you would do at 50? Not that's these. What no, you want to do. These. Not these. You know, I, I would not touch either one of these. I, I, I'm nasty, but I'm not friendly. <laughs> I would touch <laughs> Hey, let's be careful now. Let's be careful here. No, I'm saying, you know, what I would potentially do. But it wouldn't be Boy, more I got hmm? stories about Snoop, uh, Snoop family. Uh, dynamic uh, by a primary source, but I'm I won't indulge in that. Even still, you got a girl that runs her mouth about banging all these stars. Snoop should know better. And then how you sitting around seventy uh, young, in shape professional athletes, rich, and seventy y'all sharing one mouth? That's crazy. 
Who's the last one? That's us. <laughs> <laughs> I love y'all to death. I do, man. But no. There was... Wait, okay. So what did I miss? Where, where was the NBA, WNBA come in? Where, where did that come Oh, no, no, no. The WNBA has nothing to do with that. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Because I was waiting on you to bring that back around. And I'm like, what? What in the world? What? Well, see, this girl. Well, 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 see, Jamal's this frozen. Because now this girl. Jamal's has frozen. She made uh, like $50,000 since she has. Um, she made $50,000 from OnlyFans since she uh, did this story. And well, she yeah, says sure. that one of the guys. She says one of the guys, even though you can't see his face on the OnlyFans, who's on the OnlyFans with her, who agreed to do it. He's a current NBA player. So I'm sure it's a bunch of people sitting there dick watching, trying to figure out and do his tattoos, see who he is. See who he is. $50,000 since she made this announcement on OnlyFans she's made. OnlyFans was something that you should, we should have threw stock in before this corona, huh? Dude, it pays to be a stock. It always has. It's the oldest profession in the world. They just changed the name. Yep. <laughs> Well, it ain't dead, it, ain't dead. it just moved to the well. There it <laughs> yes, indeed. So now, come on. Yeah. It is now time for our Take It From Me. I know best. Uh oh. Take it from me, I know who's best. Is kind of straight off the cuff from really the unfortunate news of last night of our black superhero, black legend actor Chadwick Boseman dying from cancer yesterday of colon cancer not saying that i've had any type but i'm he was what 43 when he finally passed a uh, four-year battle with colon cancer uh i am now 41 and through recent uh events of me trying to get my health together, I've had now the acknowledgement and the reawareness of having to have my colon to be checked. And not saying that I have anything, not, not even, at least I don't even know yet, but it is, it is now reported that of course, Black people, black men especially, are at high risk of getting colon cancer and prostate cancer at a alarming rate and at such a young age now. Uh, so my real take it for me is, hey, everybody, let's, let's stay as healthy as we can. We have so much uh that this earth is now fighting against us not only are people fighting against us but the earth is getting about tired of us too and trying to get rid of us so uh please take care get healthy get checked uh even if it's just random regular checks just make sure you you know about your body it doesn't have to be anything about any specific. Just make sure your body, your well-being is is at peak position. Because there's there could be. I mean, you got children. We don't want you to to leave early before your children get a chance to get all the knowledge and all what they need from you and stuff like that. So take it from me. Well. Thank you for that, sir. If I can interject really quickly. Uh, uh, was, 
I was watching the news, and they were talking about Chadwick, and they said that colon and rectal cancer, it is recommended to begin screening at 45, which yeah. would not help Chadwick, ironically, but um, that's what the recommendation is right now. Well, they say 45 because it's it's a good medium, but your doctor really will tell you because my doctor is like, yeah, we'll wait. We'll wait till 45, but they've done many other type screenings before they got there, before they like, hey. All up in there, huh? Not, yeah, before they really gotten in there. There's still blood screenings like your A1Cs and stuff like that. That really tells what what could be happening already. So it's really up to your doctor. If, some, if your doctor sees something very un, alarming or irregular, they may check. They may check earlier than forty-five. Hopefully so. It, the it, it's plenty of going on today in Black history. Uh, that boy Charlie Parker was born. The wide receiver for the Dolphins. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's Devontae Parker. Dummy. You're right, my man, Devontae Parker. <laughs> I said Charlie Parker. Oh, enunciate, brother, enunciate. Uh, today is Michael Jackson's birthday. Really? really? I yeah. did not know that. Michael Jackson's birthday. Got to play some good music today, then. And today, also, well, it's a lot going on, but it, of, of segue facts. Uh, today in 1957, legislation passed, Congress passed the Civil Rights Act of 1957. Wow. That's, okay. So, That's big. And yesterday was the anniversary of the March on Washington. Mm -hmm. okay. so, in, so today, August 29th, today in Black history, we've had Charlie Parker was born. Michael Jackson was born. It was First the, civil rights movement. The day after the March on Washington and the 57th year anniversary of the March on Washington. And who else? What did I miss? Uh, also, D Dina Washington was born. I don't cool. know. The, the jazz songstress? Yes. Oh, okay. The Civil Rights Act of 1957. Oh, thank yeah. you. Civil Rights yeah. Act 57. So we've had some 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 significant contributors to African American culture and music, and then of course some significant events on this day in Black history. Man, I appreciate you fellas, man, and that pretty much wraps us up, man. You know, again, you have been watching the Garage Apartment. We appreciate you all, man. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, click subscribe right now, and check out our website, thegarageapt.com, man. We got some good stuff on there. We got articles, we got clips, we got videos, we got interviews. We even got some merchandise, man. So y'all be sure to check that out. And until next time, man, y'all be blessed. Y'all be good. If you can't be good, then be good at it. We'll holler at y'all till next time. Follow the Garage Department on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Tweet, photo, videos. Let me share some real quick. Follow me on social media. And subscribe to the Garage Department Radio on YouTube.